broadcasting live. It's America's longest running talk show on computers. It's Computer America, bringing you the biggest names in technology with guest interviews, new products, and your emails. Listen live at ComputerAmerica.com on any device around the world. Email the show at live at ComputerAmerica.com or find us on social media. Be sure to check out our website for contests, giveaways, show notes, live video stream, podcasts, and more. You're listening to Computer America. Hello and welcome to the Computer America Show. We are the nation's longest running, nationally syndicated radio talk show on computers and technology. Thank you for joining us. I'm your host, Ben Crossman. And everyone out there, thank you for tuning into the show. Uh, obviously, if you're listening to us on the radio, online, on the video portion, doesn't matter. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for joining us. And we have a great show planned for you, where today on the show, in the second part, we will be doing computer and technology news. And we have a lot of great, interesting stories to keep you caught up, keep you fresh on what's going on in the world of tech and in the first part of the program though we have a company and really looking forward to this because when it comes to organizing your digital footprint your digital life uh, I should you know probably be more accurate uh, everything from your photos and, and things like that this is going to be a really interesting show for you so we're going to introduce our guest Milio uh, in just a second so everyone stay tuned for that but before we do I should of course uh, mention computeramerica.com. That's where you'll find everything, including the show after the show, uh, links to our guest website, any articles that we do, any videos that we show, any products that we talk about, anything and everything will be at computeramerica.com. Uh, while you're there, also be sure to check out the live video stream. And last but not least, we have a couple we have a couple new articles up. Definitely go check those out as well, and a couple more coming up. We will let you know when those are posted. So all that and more. Again, at ComputerAmerica.com. And I think with that being said, we can go ahead and jump right into today's guest. So as I said before, this is going to be a, a great show because we will be talking to a company called Milio, And we are talking to the CEO of the company, uh, Mr. David uh, Vaskovich. There we go. I see. Do I get it? So let's go ahead. Welcome on. Just, uh, wow. I can't speak. Let's go ahead and welcome him onto the show. David, welcome onto Computer America. How you doing? Thank you. And I appreciate the fact you got my name right. We got past the first hurdle. <laughs> you know, and it's a huge hurdle for me every time. But I want to say thank you so much for giving us your time and coming on the show and uh, looking forward to this. So let's get a bit of a background on you, yourself. Uh, you know, Have you always been in tech? Uh, when did you start working with Mylio? And, uh, and also after that, just a little bit about the company. Okay, well, um, I never know whether to be proud or embarrassed to admit this, but I've been... I started writing code in 66. I, I would say proud. I, should say I would say proud. I, I should say that's nine. That's 1966, not somebody <laughs> 66. So, and then I wrote one of the first three email systems in the world in 71. Um, I worked with a guy named Bob Metcalf who invented local area networking and ethernet at 3Com. And then I joined Microsoft in 86 and I was there for about 25 years. Uh, did a bunch of things including launching uh, Windows 3.0 and the, and, uh, the office, um, building the enterprise group. And then for the last eight years, I worked uh, with Bill Gates as CTO. Uh, and then other than that, I haven't done much. <laughs> well, and, and when you say you haven't done much, that's uh, about the be one of the best resumes we've ever had here on the show, um, other than Bill Gates himself. I mean, it's that's uh, and, very... And you know, it's, it's actually been a labor of love. Usually when you hear that, that can either be exciting or scary. We've actually been at it for seven years, and uh, we're probably the best product nobody's ever heard of because we've mostly been in a kind of stealth mode until this year. And part of the reason that we're doing this podcast is uh, we're, I don't know if it's just a podcast, maybe I said the wrong word, but we're starting to reach out. We want people to know about what we've built. And, um, you know, I've been fascinated with human memories since, uh, I don't know, the, the 70s. You know, how do we remember things? Like, how is it that you and I are listening to a piece of music 
and neither one of us can figure out what the song is. And we keep, you know, puzzling away at it. And then somehow we wake up in the middle of the night knowing the name of the song. I mean, you know, the, the human brain is, is completely amazing. And one of the problems that I've wanted to solve is how do you keep up with the lifetime of memories? You know, it's, it's, a, it's a big, it's an interesting problem for all of us, particularly as we get older. And, you know, uh, so that's where my Leo comes from. Very, very interesting overview. And you're right. I think that uh, as technology has proliferated, of course, uh, you know, people don't just have, let's say, a collection of records or CDs or or something like that. Uh, no, now we have thousands of songs. We have thousands of videos, uh, you know, and who knows when we took them. They're all time stamped with the nebulous, you know, maybe 2012, August. And it's like, what was I doing way back then? Uh, yeah, there, there's, there's definitely a lot of uh, categorizing that we can do. And by the way, uh, live radio just just throwing it out there but i will say that uh this is a problem that you've set out to solve and now we're going to talk about how you kind of propose to do this so let's and, and maybe a little bit more succinct uh or maybe this is you know you plan to solve uh the issue of you know organizing people's digital life how would you describe Mylio in one sentence uh Mylio is the first life memory organizer uh, okay, I mean, there you have it. And you said a sentence, so I stopped. You know, if you want to sort of work your way through Milio, kind of, you know, starting from a simple point, uh, people are drowning in photographs. You know, it used to be that it used to be that the average person took five thousand pictures in the course of an entire lifetime. Uh, you know, now somebody could easily take five thousand pictures at a single birthday party because particularly with cell phones, you know, it's so easy to do that. You know, they have huge amounts of memory. They take amazingly good pictures. They do all the work for you. And you just, you know, you want to catch your daughter when she's blowing out the candles or, you know, it's that key moment at the school play or you've never been to some country before and you know you're not going to be back. And it's so easy to take 50 pictures of that and 10 pictures of this. And before you know it, you're, you've got thousands and thousands and thousands of pictures and you don't know what to do with them. I, I definitely so agree. That's, that's, oh, yeah, so it, as a starting point, that's the first problem that we set out to solve. Yeah, and, and sorry to stepping there, but uh, I, I will say that just last Friday uh, during our live program, we talked to a company called Opkicks, and they make a lifestyle camera that affixes to either glasses or something like that. It's about the size of like two sugar cubes next to each other. Uh, their whole thing is that, you know, like as many pictures as we take now, there are companies coming out. And my point with this, there are companies coming out that are helping you take pictures to an even, you know, to an even greater degree, you know, making sure that you capture just about anything that you could possibly want to capture. So this is, this is a problem that you say you want to set out to fix, but uh, yeah, if, if no one does, it's only going to get worse and worse and worse because we are going to have more photos, more music, more videos. And yeah, I think it's uh this is a worthwhile endeavor. Let's, I think a good place to start, and then we'll get into the finer grain details. Uh, let's say someone goes out to mylio.com and everyone m y l i o dot com. Uh, link in the show notes, of course. But let's say someone goes there, walk us through, you know, kind of creating an account and starting to use the product. Uh, just you know, let's say, let's say someone has never used this before and they and they want to start. Give us a walk through. Okay, so first of all, just to help people. Uh, my Leo can be thought of standing for my life is organized. That might help them remember the name. <laughs> gotcha. Uh, okay. So, um, somebody decides to use my Leo. Like for instance, sometimes I'm sitting at dinner and describe to my Leo and they'll decide they'll load it on their phone. Like they're sitting there at the table while I'm talking. And then at some point they stop listening to me because, you know, they're in the app store loading it on their phone. So how you start with my Leo um, you could start from two different directions. You could start from your phone or you could start from your computer. You know, there's, there's not a lot of difference between them, but there's some. If you start from your phone, by definition, the pictures you're going to have on your phone are in your camera roll. So starting on your phone is simpler. Uh, you don't get to solve as much of the problem, but you know, wherever you start, you get to the other place later anyways. So that's one of the, there, there are a few. Okay. So if you, if you uh, went to the Milio site 
and you had an iPhone or an Android phone, the next place you'd have to go is to, either, to one of the app stores. You load the product. Um, you do, there is a registration process. The only thing we ask for is your, your email. Uh, now, we are, you have to be careful not to go into too many directions at one time. So you sure. give us your email. You know, we validate the email like a lot of other companies do. So we'll send a link to your uh, e We'll send a link. You go to your inbox, you click on the link, uh, and now you've downloaded Milio, and now you're running. And the first thing that you'll see when you start up Milio is it will start bringing the pictures in from your camera roll. Now, one thing that you'll see that's different right away um, is Milio has a real calendar. Neither Google nor Apple uh, have a real calendar. So Apple has this kind of timeline. And I always find it kind of funny because when you get out to the level of looking at a year, they show you how they can jam all the pictures you took in an entire year into one small space as though it's a contest, right? Mm -hmm. um, and Google has a similar kind of thing. They don't do the thing with all the pictures jammed together. We have a calendar and the calendar looks like a calendar. It has uh, a month view where you see the days of the month. It has a year view where you see the months of the year. And then we have something nobody else has. We, has a, we have a decades view. So I'm going to keep going down this path for a minute, and then I'll come to what happens if you start your computer. Gotcha. The reason we have a decades view is that my calendar, we call it a life calendar, goes back to when my mother was born. So my life calendar goes back to 1923. Hmm. So if we didn't have a decades view, it would take forever to get back to 1923. And then what you see when you look at that calendar, it's actually visually beautiful, is you see for each year, for each month, or for each day, a key picture from that year, month, or day. Uh, but then you'll also see the key events. They'll show up there. So, for instance, if you went on a ski trip to Lake Tahoe seven years ago, that ski trip will show up there. You'll tap on that ski trip, and you'll see the pictures. Okay, now here's a question. So I just said you went to your... You started on your phone. Uh, you went through the process. Miley loaded the pictures from the camera roll. How did it know you went to Lake Tahoe seven years ago? And the answer is, Miley asks you a few questions while, you know, while you're setting it up. And one of the questions it asks you is, do you give it permission to look at your calendar? So that hmm. calendar could be an iCal. It could be a decal or it could be Outlook. Those are the three calendars we support. And if you say yes, Mylia will then bring in all the events from your calendar. And so if you, when you went to Lake Tahoe seven years ago, that was in your calendar. Now it's in your Mylio. But in your calendar, it's just a notation, right, that might go across several days. In your Mylio, it's also a notation, which might drift up to month to year level, but it also is a direct link to the pictures from that trip. So that's a form of automatic organization. So that that's kind of in a nutshell is how it would work on your phone. Okay? Gotcha. Now, let, let's say that um, you're one of those people who has a lot of pictures and you keep them on your computer. Maybe they're organized into folders. Maybe they're not. And let's say you're one of the 400 million people who have a camera. Now, you know, this is an interesting point because... One of the questions I'm sure your uh, listeners have in their mind is, you know, why would I use Mylio? Like, I've never even heard of the company. You know, it's another product I have to install. What happens if they go out of business? You know, I, I have an iPhone, and Apple already provides me with iCloud Photo Library. Or maybe I have a, I'm a Google user, and they've got Google Photos. You know, there's five or 600 million people who use Google Photos, and I think it's a great product. So... Why wouldn't I just use Google Photos or iCloud Photo Library? And so before I tell you how you'd start on the desktop, is it okay if I kind of take a tangent and talk about why you would even use Mylio in the first place? Uh, absolutely. And, uh, and and let me just take a guess before you start here, because, uh, and this may or may not be your point, but I do want to say that we have heard stories of, let's say, an artist who only uploaded their artwork to, uh, it, it was like some blog site run by Google. It was like Google Blogs or something like that. And his account was closed and he had no backups anywhere else. 
And you can, and you know, you think you can always trust Google to keep your stuff, but he lost years and years and years worth worth of his artwork. It's uh, so maybe that could be something along the lines of what you're talking about. But uh, yeah, please t- tell us tell us why you would use Milio over some of these other services or in conjunction with these other services. Well, in conjunction, it could be. So first of all, the big, one big thing about Milio is we believe in choice. So. Uh, one of the choices we give you is to keep your pictures in the cloud. And then when we do that, we even let you pick which cloud. But let me back up. So I think there are three or four main reasons somebody would use Milio. One, one is that they care about privacy or security. And I'm mentioning that first because that's what we just talked about. You know, privacy is my pictures are my pictures. I don't want anybody else to see them. Like one of the, one of the things that's always felt very creepy to me is if I'm Google and I make all my money by advertising, which today is still largely true, that they make all their money off advertising. Mm-hmm. Okay. And let's say that because I'm doing advertising, I want to understand, you know, I want to offer advertisers uh, information about who they're advertising to so they can target their ads. So if I wanted to know everything about you, like everything, and I only get one information source, Give me your photos. Like, I'll know how many kids you have. I'll know whether or not you're married. I'll know where you work. I'll know what kind of a car you drive. I'll know what kind of a car you used to drive. I'll know what kind of clothes you wear. I'll know what kind of food you eat. I'll know where you go on vacation. There isn't much that I won't know about you just given your photos. Hmm. Now, Google will say that your photos are yours and they don't give them to anybody else. And I believe they don't give the photos to anybody else. But if you read their terms of use, they're very clear that when you put stuff into a Google storage service, it's not yours anymore. It's yours and theirs. And they don't need to give your photos to anybody else. They just need to share with them everything they've learned about you. So personally, I've always found that to be kind of creepy. And then the security thing is exactly like you said, uh, you know, if it's in the cloud, it can be hacked. If it's in the cloud, it can, you know, they can decide it's, it's gone and then you have no way of getting it back. So one reason that people use Milio, it's probably not the number one reason, but you brought it up and I think it's an, an important reason is if you believe in privacy, and if you believe in security, um, it's possible in the Milio world, like my pictures are on my computers and they're on my phones and they're on my tablets. Mm -hmm. And that's the only place they are. Nobody else can get at them unless I give them access. Now, the biggest reason, though, that people use Milio, so there's basically three categories of people in the world who have photos. There's a lot of people who don't have photos, but the biggest population of all has photos, takes a lot of photos, and doesn't want to do anything with them after they've taken them. Like, you know, those are the people that you see in a restaurant swiping their screen with their finger because they're scrolling through the camera roll looking for a picture. (laughs) Because those pictures aren't organized, right? And the funny thing is if you start paying attention, literally half the time they give up. Hmm. Like half the time they find the picture and half the time they say, you know what, I'll look for it later. So, you know, one of the things that particularly Google is really brilliant at is if you put all your pictures into Google and you don't want to do anything else with them. And you know, you can, you, you, you don't think Google's going to do to you what they did to that artist. So you believe your pictures are there because Google's a big company and they have very nice search tools. And so you put your pictures in and you're done. You don't want to do anything else. That's probably, if that's who, if you're listening to this um, interview And that's you. Like, I take pictures. I don't want to lose them. But listen, I don't want to spend any time in my pictures. Uh, You might like Milio, but then again, you might not. Because it's it's really for people who want to have at least some degree of control over over their memories, over the organization of the memories of a lifetime. Right. Now, let me tell you, let let me tell you who else um, Milio isn't really for. There are other people for whom... Organizing all those pictures is a major hobby. And those are also the people who spend hours working on each picture. And they use products from a company called Adobe. And Adobe has about six or seven million users of those products, which, you know, the population of the world is seven billion. Six or seven million is enough for a respectable business. But 
we are not a product for professional photographers or, you know, super geeky hobbyists. We have some who use us. We're a pick, we're a product for all the, I'm going to call it the normal people in the middle <laughs> who care about the memories of a lifetime and who want to have some degree of control over how those memories are organized, but want Milio to help them so that it's not, a, so they do some work, but not a lot of work. So that's the second main reason that somebody would use Milio. Gotcha. And, and of course, there's uh, that, that middle ground that you're talking about. I think there's more and more of those people because maybe back in the day there were, uh, and, and you know, there continue to be, uh, scrapbooks and you know boxes of photos and things like that. Luckily, I think over the past couple of years, I think the word has gotten out that it's time to digitize these photos. So someone in every family is probably designated as the family archivist, the, 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 the one who keeps the family archive all nice and clean. And uh, so there's someone out there who has more photos than they know what to do with, and they it's their job to scan them, archive them, keep them, and share them with the rest of the family. So we know that there are people out there who need a program like this, but the question is, like you mentioned, uh, actually actually doing something with it other than dumping it in one big heap. And I believe that's where we kind of jump into Milio and some of the other features. You mentioned calendar, which is great, but uh, that's not a catch-all because let's say you... Uh, you know, let's say that you have a bunch of family photos that you scanned in at the same time. So they all have the same, uh, you know, kind of back end information. I, I forget what it's called, uh, you know, with when a photo is tagged. Thank you. It, uh, so all the photos have the same metadata. So that's not really useful. But at the same time, uh, maybe if you want to organize by face or if you want to organize, you know, maybe your own tags that you want to add in there, uh, what other ways does Milio either automatically or, you know, kind of through user input, organize photos? Yeah, so that's a good lead in. I, I want to say one other thing about who those, the users you just described, you just described the memorist. That's mm. I call them the memorist. Gotcha. And that includes all the people who have scanned pictures. And that's like a big business. Another uh, group of people like that is people who have cameras. So if you go to any tourist site or you go to any high school graduation or you go to any school sports event, you'll see people with cameras. And I don't mean, you know, fancy cameras. I mean, you know, consumer cameras. But the, the low-end consumer cameras have all gone away because cell phones are so good. But camera sales last year started to go up again. And there are 400 million people in the world who have cameras who take them, uh, you know, in Seattle, they take them to the Pike Place Fish Market in uh, or sorry, not it's a fish market. It is also that. But, you know, they, they take them. Uh, if you go on a cruise ship, you'll see people who bought cameras because the cruise ship was the first big trip of a lifetime and they want to take pictures on it. So that's the second major market. And the third one is anybody who has a small business. Because if you have a small business, like let's say you're a real estate agent or, a, you know, a, um, a jewelry designer or you make furniture or you do landscaping, graphics are a key part of your business and you're taking pictures all the time. You need to organize all that stuff. Okay, so how do, you, how do we help you organize? So we do a lot of the things everybody else does. For instance, we do face recognition. So if I had your picture, um, first time that Milio sees it and it hasn't seen that face before, it asks me who you are and I tell it. And I might have to tell it two or three more times, but then after that, it recognizes all the rest of the cases, which are your face and they're automatically tagged. So mm -hmm. I can find, you know, all the pictures with, my wife in it or my friend, just because my Leo has done all that tagging for me. The second way it organizes things is in that life calendar where it's both putting things into that familiar calendar format, but also tying in with the events in your calendar. Okay. Now the third way is really interesting because, you know, I was sort of conflicted about how to talk about this for a long time, sure. but, um, so if you had all those pictures you scanned, uh, you know, going back maybe a hundred years because you collected, you know, pictures from all your relatives and so on. So the face tagging helps you a lot because if somebody, who is that? Oh, somebody knows who it is. Okay. Now we've got all the rest of the cases where that person's in a picture, but what you're, those pictures 
the events in those pictures are not going to be in a digital calendar because digital calendars only started to be a thing about 20 years ago. So what you're going to probably do is put them into folders. That's what most people do. You know, I have a folder for my trip to Scotland. I have a folder for the summer science camp I went to when I was in high school. I have a folder for weddings and communions and bar mitzvahs. You know, as, as I find things, the natural thing to do is to put them into folders. And Milio um, honors and respects the file system. Now, this is one of the things that makes Milio interesting for another reason, because people always ask me, what happens if Milio goes away? Like, you're a small company, you could disappear. Now, you know, there have been, um, for example, Kodak had, Kodak had a photo sharing site. Mm-hmm. And at one time, Kodak was considered the safest company in the world. If you were an investment advisor and you were suggesting stocks for orphans and widows, you would always have Kodak in the portfolio. And there is no more Kodak. And when that Kodak photo sharing site went away, they arranged to transfer all of those pictures to Shutterfly, except a friend of mine found that in the transfer process, she lost 8,000 pictures. Wow. So they're gone. So one thing that I know won't go away is the files and folders. As long as I store them on enough disks, they're not going away because they're under my control. So one of the things that Milio does is it works directly with the file system. When we store things, we store everything in files and folders. Now, when you're in Milio, you don't have to be aware of that. But you also can work with those files and folders directly outside Milio. Okay, I know this is a slightly technical point, but let's say you have a small business. If you have a small business, everything is a project, and every project is a folder. How nice that Milio supports folders directly. If you're a scrapbooker and you're making up those, you know, you're going through all those scanned pictures going back 80 years, you're going to start putting them into folders. You know, you're going to want to make books out of some of the things you find. That means that you want to find them in the file system. So the fact that Milio does that is really cool. Okay, so now let, can I come to another point? Okay, let me come back to your original question. Sure. So let's say... Um, let's say you went to that cruise. You bought a camera. Maybe you and your partner each bought a camera. Maybe the kids even have cameras. Now you took all these pictures. By the way, when you're on the cruise, you discover that the internet is very expensive, very slow, and not always there. Gotcha. It's the same as not having internet, right? But fortunately, you've got Milio. So you're loading all of your pictures onto your computer. Now, here is something we haven't talked about yet. Uh, In the Milio world, all your devices talk to each other directly. You don't have to have the cloud, you don't have to store your pictures in the cloud for all of your pictures to be on all your devices. So for instance, um, I happen to be talking to you from Kauai, where I'm here with my family. And just before talking to you, I loaded about 200 pictures actually onto my iPad from a cam from two cameras. Four minutes later, all those pictures were on my computer, on both of my phones and on my other tablet because all the devices talk to each other directly using Wi-Fi. Hmm. So when you're on that cruise ship, all your devices talk to each other too. So when you get off the cruise ship to take pictures in Paris, um, when you get back in the ship, you load all the pictures. Now the ship has left and it's going somewhere else. There's no internet connection. It doesn't matter because when you want to sit by the pool looking at the pictures on your phone or your tablet, they're just there. Now, and of course, that, Leo, oh, and, and sorry to step on you there, but uh, and also there's music playing in the background. So we're going to have to come right back. If you don't mind, if you have some time, uh, I, I bet sure. you Hawaii is yeah, uh, calling you. But uh, but everyone, when we come right back, we'll talk to, uh, you know, we'll continue with Milio. And I wanted to ask about duplicate pictures because when you sync like that, there may be issues. So everyone, when we come back, we'll continue on. And uh, also, Computer Technology News, everyone, stay tuned. Oh. 
And, uh, oh, and also real quick, uh, computeramerica.com. If you want to check out the show notes or anything about today's show, you can find it right there. And on top of that, everyone will be right back right after this. Stay tuned. Greece is cheap. But the airfare costs a fortune. Paris? Not much closer. And again, airfare... What about Puerto Vallarta? Let's face it, flying anywhere is just too expensive. Wait, what's this? Low-cost airlines. With one call to low-cost airlines, you'll drastically slash your travel costs. We're talking insanely low airline prices to any of your favorite destinations. Where would you like to go? London, Rome, Costa Rica, Australia? Wow, that's cheap. So why wait? Call now to learn how crazy cheap it is to fly anywhere in the U.S. or international. Our prices are so low, we can't publish them. The only way to get them is to call to instantly hear the most amazing best deals on airline travel. It's that easy. So call now and start packing. 800-215-4461. 800-215-4461. 800-215-4461. That's 800-215-4461. We are all Brother Wolf. Ten years ago, a group of locals banded together to create positive change. We took animals into our homes, held adoption events at local retailers, and talked to the community about our mission to help build a no-kill Asheville. A decade later, we have achieved so many victories for animals in need. There's been so much progress, yet there's still so much to do. As part of our year-long celebration, we encourage you to become a member of our special Compassionate Circle program. With a monthly donation of $10 or more, you will have behind-the-scenes access to the work we are doing at Brother Wolf. Our goal is to reach 1,000 members because we receive no government funding. Working together, we can help build and sustain no-kill communities. Learn more at CompassionateCircle.BWAR.org. We are a 501c3 tax-deductible organization. And welcome back to the Computer America Show. It is 32 minutes past the hour as we continue on here. And everyone, thank you for continuing on with us. If you missed any part of our conversation so far with Milio, then please, please, wherever podcasts are heard, you can, of course, type in Computer America and you can find today's live show uh, available as a podcast and uh, yeah, listen to it whenever you want and listen to the entire thing. But for everyone out there listening to us on IRN, thank you. Thank you so much for tuning in. So we continue on. If you're just joining us, we have been talking with the CEO of Milio and that is uh, Mr. David Vaskovich. And, uh, and David, thank you for continuing on with us. Uh, thank you for staying late. And I just before the break, I wanted, um, you know, a little bit of clarification on, you mentioned that uh, it was sync and that's great between multiple devices and uh, you know making sure that if something happens because we've all seen the videos of people dropping their cameras or something happening uh, you have a backup and that's one of our tenants here on computer America is that backup 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 uh, anything that you deem worth keeping is probably worth backing up so but at the same time we've also seen this with photos and songs and things like that uh, duplicates where you know maybe you have uh, a photo stored on Facebook as well as your camera as well as in a Google Drive you bring them all together into Milio uh, do, does your system have a way to handle duplicates coming it's uh, not we have it built internally but we haven't released it yet because we're working on the UI but we're gonna have a very nice system for eliminating duplicates automatically Perfect. That's that's just what we wanted to hear. So, but uh, and also, but can I, I can, go for it? Can I jump in? I want to say one thing because I realize, you know, I love this so much. It's easy for me to wander around a little. Um, you asked about, you know, a single sentence. I'm going to tell you the other one that we've used a lot, which is everything, everywhere, always. Hmm. You might so have to, yeah, everything, you, ev everything means you can have all your pictures with you. And everywhere means you can have them on all your devices. So what we do is, and then always means you can have it whether or not you're connected to the internet and we'll also make sure you never lose your pictures. 
So let me just talk about if you're starting on a desktop, because that's the other thing we had in there, how that would work. You start Milo on the desktop. Now, of course, there's no camera roll. You go through a very similar process to the one that we described before, where you're logging in, you ask, it asks for access to the calendar. But then what Milo does is it goes and looks for the pictures on your disks and it brings them all into Milo. And then what Milo does is it arranges for all those pictures to be in all your other devices. Now here's, here's where a little piece of magic comes in. Okay. So I'm going to get just a little bit technical because some, sometimes people like to understand how this works. So let's say I'm um, like, we have one user in Holland. He's a plumber and he has about 80,000 pictures. You know, he and his wife both take pictures. He has an, an IO, an Apple phone and she has an Android phone and, They've agreed not to argue about that anymore. Um, and they have kids and they go on trips. And so they have a lot of pictures. And one thing you're going to ask is those originals can take a lot of space. Like the main reason people buy five terabyte disk drives or two terabyte disk drives is because 93% of the data in those disks is photographed. photographed. So how do you get two terabytes of photographs to fit on a 256 gig phone? So what Mylia does is two things. First of all, it asks you to designate at least one place that we call a vault. And that vault is a place where Mylia will keep all your originals. Now, they're still in the file system. They're still in folders. It's, let's say you have a computer. It has all your originals already on it. We're not going to duplicate those pictures. You're just telling Milio that that's one of the places you want your originals to go. It's a designation, not a place. Now, I have four vaults. I have two at home and two at work. And that's something you set up one time only. And by the way, setting up a vault can be as, as simple as buying um, a four terabyte Seagate drive for $100 and plugging it in to one of your computers and forgetting about it. But yet you can't forget about it till you tell Milio about it. But from now on, Milio makes sure that when you take pictures, the originals are always on the vaults and it does it automatically. So the amount of time that I spend thinking about backup has gone to zero. Zero minutes per month. <laughs> but, it, but everything is backed up all the time automatically. Okay. But the other thing Milio does is it takes all of those pictures – and then we have a kind of magic formula for this. We compress the pictures and we put the compressed pictures on your phone, your tablet, your notebook computer. And here's the thing about the compressed pictures. Um, so let's say you bought a Sony consumer camera, you mm -hmm. know, like an, I have one, it's called an RX one. They have, I don't know how they pick their names. It's not a professional camera, but the, the files are 40 megabytes a piece. It takes really beautiful pictures. So Mylia will compress that to under a megabyte. So that, that if you have 100,000 pictures in compressed form, you can have all of them on your phone, all of them on your tablet. Even if you're, you have one of those Surface Goes that doesn't have much storage, you can have all the photos there. And there are three things that are true. The compressed images take almost no space. They're indistinguishable from the original on a retina class display. You can't tell them apart. And they're editable. So now I can do everything everywhere. Like, let's say I took a bunch of pictures of that birthday party. And, you know, they're on my computer. But I'm on a trip and I have my iPad with me. Or I have my phone with me. I pull the pictures up. I edit them. I can't tell that I'm not working on the originals. And when I land, if I'm on an airplane, all the changes go back to all my other computers. And if I want to make a book or print a wall size print, I do that off the original. The same edits are applied to the original and it all works automatically. That's very cool. So now I can always have everything with me all the time. And I can't overemphasize, you know, people say, well, the internet's everywhere. Yeah, okay, it's everywhere, except in large parts of New York because somehow AT&T <laughs> can't keep up with the traffic, except all those cruise ships that are as big as a city block, uh, except, I mean, I, it, I'm amazed how when I travel, like we went to Peru, you know, and there were all these tourists there, you know, at places like Machu Picchu, lots of tourists, lots of cameras, lots of phones, lots of computers, and almost no internet. 
So if I was taking pictures and hoping I'm putting them on my computer, hoping they go up to the cloud, hoping they come back down onto my phone, not going to happen until I get home. But with Milio, it happens four minutes later. So, so, so um, I, oh, and, and, everything, everywhere, always. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So let me ask you a, a question because uh, uh, one of the other solutions that we've had to this problem, uh, I'm kind of curious, is that uh, one of the one of the companies uh, they have a solution where they uh, completely take over a hard drive. They essentially take over like uh, essentially like the operating system, I guess, of the hard drive, and they will organize everything uh, in there. So like if uh, if, if it's not compatible, uh, like it, if it's not a video, a photo, a TV show, something like that, then it just won't be recognized by the hard drive. Uh, and you can kind of clarify a little bit more, but Mylio, I guess, is kind of like a program, an application that will run off of a hard drive, but it won't take over the hard drive completely. Um, what, was it doesn't that a take anything decision? over completely. It's just an app. That's that's the thing. We don't want to be taking anything over completely. Gotcha. Yeah, and, and now, I'm gonna. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Okay, keep going. So what's the next question? Because I'm, I'm afraid if I wander, I'll get people lost. <laughs> no, I, no. I, I So far, this has been very, very easy to follow. And of course, uh, you know, collecting all this. So we've spent a lot of time focusing on photos. And, you know, obviously people will have a lot of those. But at the same time, uh, because of things like, you know, iPhones and whatnot, uh, videos are also taken. Uh, how 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 are videos handled in the system? Uh, is it just like a photo or how how, how are videos handled? Okay, well, I'm going to say, uh, yes, we do videos, but why stop there? So, yes, we do videos. Uh, they get everything, everywhere, always, exactly the same. We don't yet do compression in videos, so that's something that's also coming. But um, your videos are in there with your photos, everything. So, you know, we talked about how um, Google and Apple don't give you any control over how you organize things. In Mylio, you have... Uh, face recognition, but you also have folders and keywords and ratings. All those things apply to videos just as much. They can be in the same folders as the photos. They can be part of the same life events as the photos. So, you know, it's just tedious to say photos and videos, but if you were to go back on to what I talked about, for 90% of what I said, if you replaced photos with photos and videos, it would still be completely accurate. Okay, but now here's another interesting thing. Mm -hmm. What about documents? What about um, that high school report card? What about the itinerary for your trip? What about, okay, here's an example. It has nothing directly to do with photos, but it has actually everything to do with photos. So I was in Istanbul, and I had a new camera. And I bumped it somehow, and all of a sudden, it turned off autofocus. Mm. So I, it's like I can't take pictures anymore. They're all blurry, right? And my, uh, because international data is so expensive, I had no data connection. But all my documents are in Mylio. So I went into my Mylio on my phone because that's all I had with me. I didn't have a computer with me. I didn't have a tablet with me. And this happens to be another one of those Sony cameras with the wonderful names. I couldn't remember the name. I looked <laughs> in the camera and said it's an RX-10. I went into the search box and typed in, guess what, RX-10. And this is this, if the search is going to succeed, it's going to take 397 milliseconds. I'm being cute. Under half a second. You can't time it. So under half a second later, up pops the manual for the camera. And now I spend three minutes reading through the manual on that little screen. And three minutes later, I fix the camera. Very, very nice. Okay, now here's another example that's more related. This is a very personal example. So my father died in a plane crash in the 60s. Hmm. Of course, that's a key life event in my calendar. And so if you go through the calendar when you get to the 60s, you'll see Todja, that was his nickname, Todja's plane crash. And until about a year ago, you would have seen some newspaper clips. So those are documents, but they're in there. Newspaper clips and photographs. Okay, so a year ago, my sister got an email from the Boeing engineer who was dispatched to the crash site with his trip report. So she sent it to me. It's an attachment to an email. 
and I happen to get it while I'm in a meeting, so I don't have time to read it. But the minute that I got it, I saved it to Mylio. So that takes two keystrokes. It's a slightly different two keystrokes in Android and iOS, and it's different again in Windows and different again in Mac OS. But in every case, two, if you receive a photo or a document, you want to put it into Mylio two keystrokes later, you're done. And then you forget about it, right? Right. Okay, so now, now it's a week later and I'm on an airplane, again, with no internet connection. And I think, wait a minute, that document. Now, I don't have the device that I received it on. It doesn't matter because my Leo is keeping all my devices up to date. Remember, everything, everywhere, always. Mm -hmm. So I'm on my iPad. I love reading on my iPad. I go to 1966. There it is. Toji's plane crash. Bingo, there's a new item in there. It's a PDF document. And so I tap in the document, and then I tap to open it, and now I'm reading the trip report. Now, how cool is that? Uh, no. And tell me, why that's any, tell me why that's any less important to memory than the photos and the videos. And so this is part of organizing the, the memories of a lifetime. You don't want your videos in one place, your photos in another, and your documents in a third. You want everything together in one place, organized in a single coherent way. You want it with you all the time. You want to be able to organize it the way you want, and then you want to be able to find it. And that's what we do. So my next question is, and this is something that I um, you know, personally struggle with because I have a lot of photos that I take, and uh, let's put it this way, you, you've described a couple scenarios where you know a whole family and they'll all be using devices, that's great. Uh, there are members of my family who have not made the leap to a smartphone yet. Uh, it, it's conscious decision, yep. that's something that they have to live with. So that happens. Now the question is getting photos and getting documents to them, it's this whole thing where I have to get off one device, I have to put it into another service, I have to send them, I have to do X, Y, Z. Uh, sharing photos and things with, uh, with Mylio, how, walk us through the process of, let's say, sharing a photo with someone who maybe isn't, you know, part of your account or sharing a device with you. Uh, yeah. Could you just talk about sharing, uh, documents? Yeah. So the way we do it today is that, um, in Mylio, like this happens to me all the time, I'll be on a trip with some friends and then I want to send them the two or three photos that I took. And again, that's like a keystroke. And then I get to decide if I'm going to send it to them through email or through text. And Mylio does all that for me. I mean, I have to pick the photos and then I have to pick, there's a button. It's a, uh, we would call it the export button, but it's an icon. It's a little uh, box with an arrow pointing out of it. You pick the six photos, you tap in that button and you're done. Hmm. Not, not complicated at all. Not complicated at all. And I do it all the time. Before I had Mylio, one of the complaints was, what happens to all the pictures you took? And then si since I've gotten Mylio, I either don't get the complaint or sometimes people complain that I send them too many pictures. <laughs> uh, well, hey, that, that's definitely a better complaint than the one I get, which is, you never send me those photos. I'm like, because it's a pain in the neck. And uh, that's why I never share the photos that I take. So I'm uh, glad that you have... Now, by the way, here... Mm -hmm. Yeah, by the way, here's the best part. I can do that sharing. Remember, everything, everywhere, always. I can do it from my computer, but I can also do it from my iPad, and I can also do it from my phone, and I can go back and forth. You know, I might start in the morning on my computer, and then I'm in a cab, and I do some work on my phone, and then I'm on an airplane, and I use my iPad, and then in the evening, you know, I'm on my notebook computer, and wherever I left off, that's where I pick up when I get to the next device. Absolutely. And I think with that in mind, you know, and of course, as someone as connected as you are, and I think a lot of it, your, your use case is not uh, really, I guess, unique. I think a lot of people are as connected as you are. Uh, we're on your website and we've been, you know, kind of poking around and taking a look at your website. And now we're on the part about plans because uh, this is a subscription model. This is something, you know, it's not like a one time set and forget, or you might, I, I don't know, you, you're going to have to clarify that one. Talk about the different plans and, uh, and the different price points. Okay, so we have four plans, and one of them is new. It's a kind of special opportunity. It's not, not time limited, but it's kind of cool. So first of all, we are what's called freemium. There's a free version of Milio, and we purposely uh, 
uh, set it up so that the free version of Milio would meet the needs of a large part of the population because that's how we get word of mouth. So the free version of Milio uh, allows you to have a library of up to 25,000 pictures uh, and operates across up to three devices um, and does JPEGs, but it doesn't, if you know what a raw image, the free mm -hmm. version doesn't do raw images. So that's free. You can use it forever that way. You can be on the paid version and revert to the free version, and we're fine with that. Gotcha. And then we have what we call the premium version, which is uh, $100 a year. Um, and there's a monthly rate, too. I just don't remember all the numbers. But let's just say it's $100 a year, so less than $10 a month. And that version gives you uh, five devices, 100,000 pictures, and all the features, including raw images. Okay. And then there's a max version, which is unlimited everything. So we have one user with over a million pictures. And <laughs> in the small business environment, uh, we often find uh, a team or even an extended family that has 10 or 15 devices. No problem. There's no limits. And that's $250 a year. And by the way, I was talking to one user who has a relatively small library who was on the max plan. And I said, well, why are you on the max plan? He said, look, we have seven devices. And um, are you still there? Yeah, no, no. Yeah, I'm still here, of course. Okay, I heard a sound, yeah. He said, and, and uh, you know, it's less than $25 a month. Like, I can't take my family to the movies for that. <laughs> now, we announced um, a partnership with, with Seagate at CES at the beginning of January. So starting with, and they announced a new line of um, disk drives. Uh, you know, every year, I guess their drives get better. And that's my experience. So the drives that are shipping now, and when I say now, I mean some of them are actually in the channel this week, just starting mm -hmm. this week, come with a year of Milio, let's just say on the drive. So now that's, you might ask, which Milio, which plan? And it's a plan we created just for them. They call it Milio Create. So that's a plan that's between the free plan and the premium plan. So it's 50,000 pictures, four devices, and all the features. So if you were thinking, um, I need more storage, or I want to have another location where I store my pictures, uh, go buy a Seagate drive, and depending on the size of your library, you're all set. Very, very cool. And, and of course, Seagate, um, you know, they are, they're, they're one of the best hard drive companies out there. So I think you chose very, very well in your partnership. Uh, definitely a fan of their, uh, of their hardware. And uh, yeah, very cool that uh, you're able to do that because uh, there's, I think a lot of the native software that comes either with your Microsoft operating system or some of the other solutions, you know, like you mentioned with Google, they're good, but uh they're they're not one size fits all, and it, it sounds like you have something really special here with Mylio. And I gotta say, a lot of different features either are coming or you already have. Give us before we say goodbye. Give us uh, some personal anecdotes. Maybe you know you mentioned that you were kind of sharing it with uh, friends and relatives and things like that. Uh, tell us about how people. I guess after using Milio, do they find themselves taking more pictures? Do they find themselves sharing, you know, sharing pictures more readily? Uh, just what are, what are people experience uh, with using the service? Well, it's all of those things. You know, they they start to experience that they're not drowning in the pictures as much. That they actually can access the, you know, the pictures that they take. Like when we introduced the Life Calendar, um, I had one user tell me I have pictures and folders going back 20 years of all these trips I've been in and I kind of know how to find the folder, but it's too much work to go there. But now they're in the calendar. I'm going to these old pictures all the time, but I'd almost forgotten that I have. So, um, and the other thing is there's a lot of frustration out there because there used to be a lot of products sort of in the same space as ours, maybe not the going across multiple devices, but like for instance, Google had Picasso. Mm -hmm. And there still are millions of users who love Picasso because it works with the file system. Like, you know, I want to spend some time organizing my pictures. Not a lot, but the reason I took them is because I care about them. And I want to have the choice of being able to attach keywords. I want to have a rating system. And I like the file system, you know. So, uh, but Google discontinued Picasso. So we're like the last man standing. So a lot of those people are telling us, thank God you're giving me a way of being in control of my pictures again. 
Absolutely. And one other point that I should really mention is that, and we kind of gloss over this a couple of times, but um, uh, having your photos is one thing. Sharing your photos, uh, you mentioned how you can do that very easily. We should also mention uh, if there are any uh, social media tie-ins. I saw that you can download your photos. Uh, let's say you, you want to go the uh, you know one of the extreme routes because Facebook has had a lot of problems lately. Let's say you want to take all your photos off of Facebook. Uh, I believe you can import your photos from Facebook. Or let's say you want to uh, share photos to, let's say, Flickr or Facebook. What social media integration do you have with your service? So we provide facilities to take everything off Facebook, for example. It's a fairly straightforward process. Or take selected things off Facebook. Um, and, uh, you know, like what else would you be looking for? You, you know, we, um, since everything's in the file system, it's very straightforward to put them into other services. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's not something we do a lot on. We've talked about doing more and we will, um, in terms of sharing, the biggest thing that we have to do in the future is to provide the ability to have shared albums. Gotcha. So if I had a shared album and I could give a link to it to family and friends, they wouldn't have to be Mylio users. And then as I add pictures of the album, they would automatically be able to see those. We don't do that today. And it's something that users ask for. And I wish we had it and we will have it one day. But, you know, we're a small company, so we have to be careful about what we do and when we do it. You, you, you say you're a small company, but you have a lot of features, and this is a really, you know, a very, very interesting looking product. I will, and of course, I'll let you have uh, the final word here before we say goodbye, David, because again, I'm sure that, uh, you know, your family's calling you. But uh, yeah, I apologize for taking the whole hour. But if people want to find out more, uh, and also, as I understand it, like you said, uh, give it a free trial as well. You know, there's always a free version available. If people want to find out more, where's the best place they can go? www.mylio.com. If you do a search, you'll also find we're after the Seagate announcement, uh, we're starting to get new, we're starting to get reviews. So reviews are starting to show up. You can find those as well if you do a search. There's some older reviews, but the best single source is the Mylio website. All right. And everyone, once again, we'll have a link to that at computeramerica.com. And David, I got to say, I, I was not expecting this to go long, but it was so interesting. I'm very happy it did. Uh, thank you so much for coming on to Computer America. Thanks for making it fun. Our pleasure, our pleasure. So, David, until next time, definitely going to keep a, you know keep an eye out. Let us know of, uh, of any updates. And uh, until next time, thank you for sharing your, your, uh, your product with us. My pleasure. All right. Have a great one and uh, enjoy Hawaii. Goodbye. Okay, thanks. Bye. All right, everyone. And there he goes. That's uh, that, that was very, very, uh, that was an outstanding interview because obviously uh, not many interviews last that long. But hey, like I said, that was a lot of fun. And if you want to find it, again, computeramerica.com, link in the show notes, or mylio.com, and you can see it all there. And as you said, you can try it for free. Uh, three devices, 25,000 photos, and uh, you know, not not all the features, but what can you ask for free? And of course, uh, 10 bucks a month. Hey, not half bad, not half bad. You can uh, definitely go check that out. So happy to have them on and uh, was really looking forward to that. Now, of course, looking at the clock here, we were going to we were going to do computer and technology news and in fact we can go ahead and play the news jingle in the background check that out see we got stuff so uh news in the background but unfortunately we just won't be able to get to let's go and let that finish we won't be able to get to any of these articles but some of the articles that we weren't able to get to if you feel like going out and doing some homework uh, there's a lot of them, including and uh, two articles about Huawei. Uh, this is in, this is a story that we're trying to follow very closely. It's uh, it's getting confusing because there's there's one article saying that they are cloning Apple parts, and this is something that uh, the U.S. government has accused Huawei of doing. And this is a tech theft. This is where they take patented, protected. Uh, pieces of technology, reverse engineer them, and market them as the, uh, for themselves. It's something that, uh, in the world of technology, it's like stealing a comedian's jokes. It's just not good. And then on top of that, uh, the EU has determined that they will actually, well, uh, not ban Huawei from their systems. So, or from their networks. It's, uh, it, it's a confusing time to live in. And one more thing on top of that, YouTube is to blame for the spread of flat earthers. 
That's right, you can find that and more at ComputerAmerica.com. We'll include some links to some articles that we didn't get to do, but you should go check out. Everyone, until next time, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for joining us here on Computer America. Wherever podcasts are heard, you can find today's show and every other show. Uh, Take us with you, take us on the go, and in the meantime, until tomorrow, everyone, have a great day. Thank you so much. And uh, let's see, real quick, tomorrow on the program, we should be having a company called Impact Gameworks. They make a game uh, called Tangle Deep. Everyone, Gamer Tuesday, tomorrow. Have a good one. Bye-bye.